Hello fellow Hordes of the Blue and welcome to my channel and welcome to what is probably my most anticipated video. Yes, they are finally here. Welcome to the official presentation of the Vallejo Express Color Range Expansion. A massive expansion taking the original range of 24 paints to a total of 60 and this time they actually let me pick the colors so I tried to fill all the gaps and problems the range had and to be honest I think it's pretty much perfect. But before we start and just so we can have an uninterrupted look into the range, here is a message from today's video sponsor, Fume. I've seen a lot of people around me struggle with bad habits. Not me, of course, I'm basically perfect. Uh, it can be very challenging, but our sponsor, Fume, looks at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air, and instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. Fume comes with a great selection of incredible flavors packed in this small course, orange, vanilla, grapefruit, raspberry, lemon, and more. It's super easy to use. You just load the core into your fume, adjust the airflow valve, and enjoy. Not only will it help you break your bad habits, but it's also very cool. The manufacturing is amazing. It feels like a quality product, very satisfying to use. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash Juan Hidalgo or scan the QR code and use the code Juan Hidalgo to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use the code Juan Hidalgo to save an additional 10% off on your order today. There are so many cool surprises in the new expansion and we try to please everyone with these new paints, uh, but only you can be the judge here, so let's get cracking. I think it's time we start testing the new colors and we are going to start with one of the most requested ones. This is of course the much awaited bone color and it just looks amazing. It's one of my favorites. I find it way better toned than Skeleton Horde. Really, really nice color. While we are in that color range, I also wanted to add a warm white color to complement White Templar, which is a colder white color. I really like it. It's really well toned. It will lighten up a little bit when it dries, but you can always thin it down. Browns were also one of those colors that, you know, we didn't have enough in the original range, but we have plenty now. And we're going to start with another of those requested colors, which is a wood color. And as you can see, it's plenty intense and saturated. It looks really, really good. But that's not the only dark brown color that we have. We have another one. Well, we have a couple more, but this is another of my favorites. This will be perfect for anything leather. A slightly different hue than the wood one. We have a lot more skin tones in this range. Let's start first with the normal skin tones. And by normal, I mean nothing fantasy related. We are going to start with a very rosy skin tone. Perfect if you want, you know, for halflings or you know, whatever you want to make look really, really rosy. This is the second of our normal skin tones. We're going to move into darker skin tones now. Really nice tanned look. Also actually a fantastic color if you want to shade basically anything. It's really, really nice hue. We are moving now into the darkest of the skin tones. This was the darkest that we could actually make. And if you want something darker, you can always mix it with a black, which we also have new ones. Or, you know, do another layer. But a really nice skin tone as well. Let's move into more of a fantasy-oriented skin tone. 
This would be amazing for a uh, demon. But also, of course, to create bruises and stuff like that. Also, really good shade color. If you thin this down a little bit more, you can get a fantastic shade color for your washes. This would be ideal for anything Nurgle. That's how vibrant. Also to anything that is foresty. It's really saturated. It looks really, really yellow and intense and greenish. It's a really good color. And we end with a very zombie-like uh, color. This would be great for anything that you want to look dead. It's very grayish, very desaturated skin tone. Let's move now into something a bit more vivid. And it's one of my favorite colors of the new range. It's a new orange. This is a very yellowy orange. Amazing color to paint anything. Plasma, fire. If you want a really intense and fiery orange, this is what you will go through and going to use this a lot. Speaking about intense, let's go and check this color out. This is a super intense pink. Really bright, really joyful. Very bubblegum kind of color. I really, really like it. I was surprised how much I like this color when they sent it to me for testing. Let's keep up the intensity with a new purple. A really bright and shiny purple. It would be amazing if you want to paint Emperor's Children, be it 30k or even 40k. Beautiful color. We still have more pinks and this is a lovely one. A little bit lighter in pigment but a fantastic color to have. A more muted kind of pink with nice purple shadows. Really really nice color. Now we have another of the requests. We wanted to create a range of greys and this is the first one with a slight, very very slight pearl poly hue. A really nice, rather neutral grey. This is another of the greys, a little bit warmer grey, a little bit more brown oriented. I, it would be grey to paint or to tone or create weathering. But also if you want like a dirty black or dirty grey color, to a really nice complement to Black Lotus. We now have a really nice sea grey. I love this color, it's one of my favorites. Amazing if you want to paint non-metallic metal, or even if you want to shade your steel with this. It's a really nice greenish, bluish hue. And now we have a straight up cold grey. This would be a great hue if you want a more desaturated space walls. This would be an ideal color for that. So not that super bright baby blue. So if you want something a bit more muted, this would be amazing. And on top of those colors for the normal range, uh, we wanted to add a green and a blue. So the first one is like a mid green, just a mid very bright saturated green with a yellowy tint. If you've ever used uh, artist paint, the phthalo green yellow shade, this is, would be very much the same color. It's that, it's that kind of hue. And finally the blue, we have a very much like Prussian blue, another fantastic color to have, really useful, the saturated dark blue. Ideal if you're painting something like Napoleonics, would be a great color for you to have. Really nice hue, it's a lovely color. These paints I'm going to show to you now are also from the normal range. I'm going to explain what not normal is in just a teeny tiny bit. But we wanted to design a set of 8 paints that would fit any modern military wargamer from World War II to the modern era with colors that are specifically tinted to match World War II colors. Let's start with a field gray, lovely greenish gray color. It's a fantastic color. This would be your British battle dress color. The name is self-explanatory. A greenish brown color. It's a very... I really hope we tone this correctly. It's really difficult to do with these kinds of paints. But I'm really happy with the final results. Remember this is applied over pure white. So if you want a more muted result, darker result, just apply it over a gray and it's going to look fantastic. This is a more yellowy color. 
ideal if you want to paint Imperial Japanese or even Soviets. This fits in basically that space. It's really easy to just thin it down a little bit more if you want a lighter version of this. We also made two olive drab colors. This is the first one, a darker one, more greenish. Really, really good for your US Army. And this would be a more yellowy olive drab. Again, also perfect for US. The US uniforms have a lot of variation, but also a fantastic generic military olive drab color. Imagine how many colors or shades can you do mixing all of these colors together. For the last of the military greens, I wanted to have something that would match almost perfectly or as close as we could do it to the Cadian box art. So this would be it. But it's also again a really nice dark green military color. Really useful color. We're going to end with a couple of ochre colors. This would be the lighter of the two. Fantastic color. It leaves a really nice buff color on the surfaces with a nice rich shadow. It's such a good color. Again, I designed this specifically to match as close as possible to the Cadian undersuit. And for the last one of these military colors, we have a darker, very, very yellowy orangey ochre. Of course, this is useful for anything, but look at that super nice color. If you want to paint anything desert camouflage or anything like that, this would be ideal. Super orange and beautiful ochre color. This would also be quite good to paint Tau. Really nice saturated staining color. And with those, we conclude the normal express colors. And I say normal because we have eight more colors, but they are different. These are the intense express colors, and these are like a sub range of the express colors. And let me explain why we chose to separate them from the normal range. Uh, that is because they have a lot of pigment in them. So much pigment that they behave differently from the rest of the range. So if we just left them inside of the normal range, we will have inconsistent behavior between paints in the same range, creating a not good experience for the user. So having them in a separate range, we make sure that those eight colors are consistent between them and the rest of the range is, is consistent between itself. These are really useful colors to have, and I highly recommend you do them. And we're going to start with a red. This is a more intense red. You can already see it. It's thicker, it's more opaque, has a really nice intensity. I would recommend you apply this over a bone colored primer if you can. It will give you a more like saturated red. We also have intense yellow, which is very, really staining and it will leave a really nice contrast and a fantastically saturated yellow over the surfaces. This one creates more contrast than the previous ones, which were a little bit less contrasty. This was designed to provide more contrast, have a more orangey shadows than the other ones. We also have a new orange, another one, different than the other ones, super intense and op opaque orange. This color would be great if you just primed white to apply like a base coat of orange. <laughs> it's that kind of color. It's really, really nice and intense and saturated. We also have an intense blue. This is a really nice ultramarine blue. So if you are familiar with the ultramarine pigment, this would be very much be it. Uh, fantastic, obviously, for ultramarines. We also have an intense dark green, obviously designed to match the Dark Angels armor, specifically designed to be Dark Angels armor in a bottle. To me, much, much better than the Dark Angels contrast paint, Dark Angels green, more saturated, more intense, more contrast and easier to use because Dark Angels is one of the most difficult ones. This is much, much easier and leaves an amazing looking green. The next one is a desaturated turquoise color. This will look amazing for Sons of Horus players, for example. But it's a really nice complement to the other turquoise colors of the previous Express range. This is way more opaque than the other colors, and it really shows. And it has, again, as I said, a ton of pigment in it. This looks like it lacks contrast, but trust me, when it dries, all the recesses will be 
quite darker than they are now and it will provide a lovely contrast. You will see it in the final pictures. The range has a lot of love for Space Marine players and of course we couldn't leave one of the most popular chapters or legions behind. This is an amazing color if you want to paint Space Wolves. It's a, another cold grey but it's toned to be more of the modern Space Wolves color. Of course, one of the biggest complaints about the previous Express range was that the black wasn't really black. It was more of a cold grey and we wanted to make a black. So the last color of the range and part of the intense range is a black. And when I say black, I mean black. There will be no complaints. This is black. Over white primer, it leaves an amazing black result with just one layer. It's actually quite stunning. It leaves nice edges, nice highlights of a neutral grey. This is really, really neutral. So if you wanted a neutral grey, you can just thin down. That's why we didn't do a neutral grey, because this would be, it will serve as our black and as our neutral grey with medium added to it. But look at that. That is black, black, black. So that's the complete range. I really hope you like what we did and I hope you don't miss any colors this time. At least for me, this is the most complete range and the most practical of all the contrast type paints out there. As always, I took high resolution pictures of all the colors and I will leave a link in the description where you can find them individually as well as a full chart. Feel free to download them to your heart's content. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below and in the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. Patreons and members allow me to do all the cool videos that I want to make and most importantly, they allow me to release them all for free here on YouTube. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people, early access to some of my videos, and also private one-on-one -on -one online tutorings. If you want a private tutoring with me, don't hesitate and join now. Help me and my family enjoy the list of the coolest persons in the planet, including Jose Navarro, Luis Manuel Tocaoria, Miguel Ángel Sancho Morinero, Janner, Flo, Terry Denham, Robert Smith, The Rhinosaur, Will Ewig, Heather Amster, Grisha Kalish, Stavros Stavro, Tommy Rukum, Cedric Kotzenmacher, Giovanni Constanza, Biom, Howard Holby, Thomas Ustergaard, Javi Mota, Christoph Moret, Bartolomé Cajusa, Victor Domen, Nicolas Furnell, Spicy Joe, Ossie Best Life, Nathan Blaze, Hamish Donald, William Gilliland, Matthew Lang, Milam Shebesh, Joseph Hunt, Joseph Nunam, Inigo Garcia, Kelly Richter, Strat Molina, Shingi Guo, C.A. Bramble, Mike Regueira, Scarlet Dragon, Chris Howell, Romain, Ars Miniatura, Little Painted Stuff, Dan Sex 92, MJG 3D, Jazz Rex, Joe Offut, Smurphy 676, Dakota M. Miller, Wesley Browning, Gunrunner 243, Dr. Cathaber, Daniel Slobo, Dune Vader, Freddy BLNW, Hayato Ken, Angelos Alexos, Alastis, Mick Gallagher, Felix Franke, Aaron Brenstein, Alfredo Phillips, Daniel 2007, Stephanie Al Nick Demao, Painting Peter, David Sutherland, Royal Nilsson, Oscar Jonathan Tomberg, Dan Mako, Cristalios, Carlos Rivera, Jimmy Milligan, Kevin Mian, Darcy Farrar, Chris Fivey, Samuel, Natius Maximus, Aaron Dell, Gareth Smith, Mark Atkinson, Mark Jarvis, Joe Simpson, Charles Armintas, G-Force, Dr. B, Mark Wallet, Lennart Lindemann, Kieran O'Murthal, and Kevin Sullers. And as for me, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.